Okay, today I'm going to show you several different ways to use a place value chart. And I will be honest, when I started teaching fourth grade, I was flabbergasted that we still had to teach place value. I didn't understand why it was important. And it really hasn't been until recently that I have discovered just how powerful a place value chart is as a tool. It's probably my favorite tool that we have to teach from kindergarten all the way through fifth grade. So when you are in kindergarten first grade, you're using a place value chart to show numbers. So I'll grab a pen. Let's say that I have the number 34. And I'm going to do it in two different colors so that my place value chart shows the two different colors really well. So your kindergarten or first grader should be able to tell you that 34 is three tens and four ones. And draw this in the place value chart. Okay, not super helpful, right? It's not gonna help you solve problems to see that 34 is three tenths and four ones. But the understanding that this is what it looks like will help the kids solve problems down the road. So let's look at another blank place value chart. So this time, let's say we're in maybe first grade, maybe second grade, and we are adding. Let's say that we want to add 43 and you know what, we'll say we're in second or third grade so that we can show regrouping on this one. Let me see what's a very different color than that. We'll do an orange. 43 plus um, 38. Well, that's kind of brown. That's okay. Okay, so if I'm going to add these, I've got to pull out my original color. Okay, if I'm gonna add these, the first thing I do is write the first number in my place value chart. So that's four tens and three ones. I'm not changing color between the tens and the ones because I feel like that's a lot of colors at once. So probably you wanna keep it to uh, two colors if you're adding two numbers, three colors if you're adding three numbers on your place value chart. So 43, and now I put my second number on there because I'm putting them together. And 38, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's also helpful to keep five in one row on the place value chart for easy um, adding later on. Um, you just know, okay, one row is five. I probably should have gone all the way across, but I didn't plan ahead. Okay, now I actually need one more color because I need to do some regrouping. You'll notice if I count up my ones, I have 11 ones in here. You can't write 11 ones, there's not room. So I have to regroup. The way you can show this on a place value chart is you grab 10 ones, and we know that 10 ones is the same as 110, so we move this over and exchange them. So now when I'm counting on my place value chart, I say, well, I only have one one here, and now how many tens do I have? Four, five, six, seven, eight. 81. And you could, let's say that I had more than 10 tens, I could grab those, move them over to the hundreds. And I could keep doing this all the way if I had a bigger um, place value chart. I could. I could add any number, any two numbers, if I had the right size place value chart. And on the other end, smaller too. Once you have kids working with decimals, a place value chart can be helpful as well. Okay, so that's how it works with adding. Let's see how it works with subtracting. Let's get some new colors here. So let's say that I am, again, in second, third grade, and I'm gonna do some subtracting with borrowing. So we'll say 82, take away 68. Okay, the first thing I do is draw my first number on my place value chart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight tens, two ones. You see that it's really important that kids understand without thinking about it 
how to draw numbers on the place value chart. Otherwise, they're gonna be using up a lot of their working memory remembering how this works. So that's why it's so important to spend that time in kindergarten, in first grade, even maybe in second grade, drawing numbers on the place value chart. This part of it needs to be automatic. Okay, now because I'm subtracting, I don't add 61 dots to the chart, or 68 dots to the chart. I'm gonna take away 68 dots. So I run into my problem. I have two dots here. How do you take two dots away from eight or eight dots away from two dots? You can't. So we need to take 110 and move it so it becomes 10 ones. And if you have kids that are having a hard time understanding this on the place value chart, the uh, base 10 blocks are really helpful for this. Okay, now that I have my 10 ones, now it's easy to take away eight of them. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to my tens. This one's already gone. I can't do anything with that. If it's helpful, instead of circling it, you can have kids cross it out or do both. Now I need to take away six tens. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm left with one. So my ones, I have one, two, three, four, and my tens, I have one for 14. Okay, so that's how you would subtract. So this, I think, is where a lot of work with the place value chart stops, but it doesn't need to because we can use the place value chart to show multiplication by tens. So for example, let's say that I had six times 10. I can show this on my, oh, I should have done a different color. We'll make this a blue. Okay, six times 10, kind of Seahawks colors. Okay. So I'm gonna put my six on the place value chart first. It's just six ones, three, four, five, six. Now when I multiply by 10, that means each one of these is exchanged for a 10. So instead of a one, it becomes a 10. So I could draw arrows for each of these dots going over to the tens. That would get a little bit messy. So what I like to do instead is draw a circle around them or a shape around them and move them all over to the tens. If I move them all over, I'm gonna end up with six of them, five, six, in the 10 spot. And if I was moving them uh, to the 100 spot, I would go all the way here. If they had started in the tens, if I was doing we'll say 60, need another color, times 10. So we're gonna ignore this part. We're just working with my six tens because that's what 60 is, six tens. Then I would just move them one place to the left. So they become six hundreds. Okay, so that's how you would multiply by 10. You can also show division by 10. Let's say here that I had 400 and I wanted to divide that by 10. So to draw, I always start drawing the first number. To draw 400, I just draw four circles in the hundreds place. I'm dividing them by 10. So remember when I multiplied, I moved to the left. When I divide, I move to the right. So I'm gonna circle these four hundreds and I'm going to move them one space to the right. And I end up with four tens or 40. Okay, I could divide by 10 again and they would become four ones. Okay, so that's multiplying and dividing by 10, but we can also multiply and divide by multiples of 10. Pull out these two colors. So let's say I have three, and I wanna multiply that by 40. Okay. 
I always start out by drawing my first number on the place value chart. So that's three ones. Now, when I'm multiplying by 40, you can use the associative property and say, well, 40 is actually four times 10, and I can break it up into two pieces. So the first thing I'm gonna do is multiply by four. So I'm gonna say, well, I'm gonna do three times four first. To multiply three times four, that's just, um, it could, well, it would be three groups of four or four groups of three. Since I already have a three here, I'm gonna do four groups of those. And I'm gonna leave them in green just to make it easier to understand that I didn't add anything, I'm just multiplying. So here's my first group of three. Here's my second group of three. Third group of three. Fourth group of three. Okay, so I've multiplied by four. And this should, we'll say this is green. First, do this first. And you don't really have to do it first. You could do it second, definitely. That's what the associative property tells us. I'm gonna switch colors. We'll do red, something very different. Now, the second thing I'm gonna do is this, multiply in that 10. Well, we've already multiplied by 10, haven't we? We circle all the dots in the ones place move them to the tens place. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, nope, three. We all make mistakes. That's why you usually work in pencil, except when you wanna be colorful and be in pen. One, two, three, that's my second group, third group, fourth group. And so now I have 12 tens. That number doesn't really make a lot of sense, 12 tens. So I'm gonna grab another, well, I mean, it does make sense. You know what 12 tens are. But if you wanted to make it even more clear, you would circle 10 tens and move those to the hundreds. Notice that I don't have my arrow up top. In my head, when I have an arrow up top like this, it means I'm multiplying or dividing by 10. I'm moving the whole thing. When I have the arrow in the middle, it means I'm exchanging. I'm saying 10 tens are the same as 100, which would leave me with 100 and two tens and zero ones, or 120. Okay, so that's just seven different ways that you can use a place value chart in your classroom. It's gonna be really hard to introduce this to your fourth and fifth graders if they aren't really comfortable with this. So that's why it's so important to build that understanding a little piece at a time. And if you're at a school that hasn't been using this, uh, this type of math, you might have to start out here with your fourth and fifth graders, and that's okay because they need to be really solid on this before they can do all the other pieces. But once they are solid with each piece, these concepts that can be so hard for uh, fourth graders, fifth graders, sixth graders, uh, become really easy because they know that they can draw it out and count. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.